Okay, let's start. So my name is Daniel Durish and let me welcome you at virtual edition of SEO ZAS 2021. This would be the third year of the conference SEO ZAS in Slovakia that originally started as a small meetup of SEO community, but then it expanded into, into real conference uh, uh, that kind of caught us uh, unprepared for that, but uh, we were of course happy to see that. And uh, today's guest is uh, Maros Kortis from Mangools. Uh, he's a chief marketing officer at Mangools, and he's going to talk about uh, software as a service content marketing uh, and promotion and how to uh, promote uh, companies like this in, uh, in uh, SEO and in content promotion. And Maros, uh, let me start with the question for you. What's your, uh, what's your opinion of uh, having a blog for, for companies similar to Mangul's uh, software as a service company? Should they start the blog in addition to optimizing uh, product pages or is there some other recommended techniques that you can tell us about? Um, hi everyone, first of all. Um, thanks, Daniel, for, for the introduction and for having me on this year's uh, SEO RAS. I'm very happy to be here. Um, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll get to your question. Um, definitely. Um, just let me, let me share my screen. Uh, definitely starting a blog uh, as a co for, a com for a company is a, is, is a great step ahead. And exact, that's exactly what uh, I guess we are here today. So uh, my goal today uh, is to give you um, as many takeaways uh, as possible for, for your content, content marketing campaigns based on our experience um, uh, in Mangles. So uh, yeah, that's exactly that, um, what I'm going to talk about because I, I would like to start with the thing uh, when we realized that blog would be, would be a great thing and how it helped us to think about our product landing pages from a different point of view. And yeah, one of the techniques of promoting your content is link building. So that's another part of, of, of today's talks. Uh, we, did, we did a bit of a different link building campaign uh, compared to the ones that you are probably used to or to the best practices. And of course, uh, when everything goes well, some things can go bad. And that's another part that I would like to talk about today uh, because last year brought us uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think uh, one of the answers for, for your question would be um, the, the difference between, between product landing pages and, and blog posts. Uh, I think that most of you know uh, that the main goal of um, product landing pages is to, is to sell products or in the case of software as a service to make the visitors um, sign up for a free trial or free account and buy your service later. When you run a company's blog, uh, your goal is not to sell directly or I, would, I, I shall say not to sell at all. You can use the blog um, uh, as support for your product, uh, which means that you will um, write mostly product related posts, or you can aim higher and try to rank for related uh, keywords with a bit of a different search intent. And eventually you can become even an, an authority in your niche. Uh, so, so yeah, this, th th this is great. And yeah, but uh, when you are going to uh, do content marketing or to start a, a company's blog, keep in mind the three most important things. Um, it's really time consuming and it will take a lot of time to see the results compared to uh, product landing pages. And of course it takes a lot of money because uh, you have to hire content writers and you have to promote the content and it's not, then it, that's not for free. And the third very important thing is that measuring the return on investment of uh, your content activity, content marketing activities can be tricky compared to product landing pages where you have 
like clear conversion journey, product signups, purchases, and so on. So, uh, but the one advice I would give you, uh, don't compare how many blog readers buy your product with how many uh, product page visitors buy your product. That's not the point, it's completely different topic. Running a blog is, is uh, making a new top of the tunnel. Uh, okay, well, yeah, um, as you can see, our focus on writing blog posts from 2016 is quite big. Um, the reason I chose this graph is uh, that the amount of content you publish won't necessarily correlate uh, with the organic traffic you'll get. Back in 2016, when I joined the team, uh, there were three product landing pages, I guess, and a few blog posts that were all uh, product related, you know, such as mm, and data updates and new features and something like that. Uh, so uh, I, I loved writing and publishing SEO related content on a blog of a company that develops SEO tools was a bit of a no brainer for me. But the problem was that I didn't have enough SEO knowledge. So I decided to write about topics that I had experience with such as PPC or or social marketing, it was it was related to digital marketing. I mean, SEO is part of digital marketing, but uh, from long point, longer long term point of view, we knew uh, the the our only focus uh, would have to be only on SEO and nothing else. And also, the results were were nothing special. Uh, so so yeah, well, which brings me to another part, and that's content planning. Um, that's something we didn't do in the, in the past. And, uh, I think, uh, it was a bit of a mistake, uh, at least some content calendar and, or promotion plan would probably make us realize sooner that we need to write only SEO related content or, or we needed to hire skilled writers and maybe the numbers would be higher sooner. I mean, who knows? On the other hand, our use case is, is a bit of a special because uh, when we, we were a small team and we we all loved SEO. So uh, the process was more natural because um, developing new SEO tools and writing new blog posts pushed us to learn new things and share, uh, share our experience. So, so at the time we were not like, okay, we are gonna to write, uh, hire 10 content writers, but it's definitely a thing that you can try. Uh, but yeah, when we, when we uh, started with the bare minimum, at least some planning, uh, we, we, it really changed for us. Uh, the results became uh, re really great. And as you can see on this, on this chart, our, our, our uh, uh, traffic on our blog really like skyrocketed. And I think, yeah, uh, yeah, it was in, in 2018, uh, it was, I would say the first huge breaking point of our content marketing uh, when Vlado, who is our uh, head of content, came with an idea uh, of reworking a series of SEO guides I wrote a year sooner. And his idea was uh, creating a, an ultimate guide for beginners, some, some kind of a huge piece of content and this is basically where we started real content marketing with planning, promotion, and link building, and all that stuff. And yeah, the 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 results the results were amazing. So uh, when I go back to product landing pages, uh, we we were we were really motivated by our blog results. So we wanted to get more organic traffic on our product landing pages too. Um, if, 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 you, if you decide to run a company blog or a blog that is uh, with uh, writing with related stuff to your product, that means that you can, you can rank for uh, keywords that are uh, related, by they but they have uh, different search intent. In, in, in our case, uh, we have a keyword research tool called KW Finder. So let's say the ideal scenario will be uh, uh, ranking for a term keyword search volume with the specific product landing page. And on the other hand, ranking for a keyword, let's say how to analyze keyword research form, some, some navigational form. 
uh, phrase uh, we would rank with, with the blog posts. Unfortunately, those new landing pages didn't work out and I think um, we failed. So uh, what happened next is we had to come with something different to boost the, the landing pages. Uh, we came up with an idea to re recreate them as a, as a quick guide that would show the benefits of, of, of each feature that we offer in our SEO tools, you know, how to use it, how to read the data and how to use it on your website. Um, in our case, we didn't have to care about uh, cannibalization of the blog because our um, products are on different domains as the main goals blog. So, so from the SEO point of view, this was actually, actually a good thing because we could rank with more websites in search results. Uh, so yeah, the, eventually those landing pages started ranking, uh, but as you can see on the pictures, uh, I think still the most, the most important uh, advantage of these landing pages is that they rank as a, as a side links and they, did, they don't get too many clicks, but they get uh, many impressions. So, so overall, our, the search results looks, looks great. Uh, so I think, yeah, they make sense. Cool, let's move to the link building part. Um, I think that uh, if there's anyone who tried link building uh, today with us on the webinar, uh, I guess they know that the product, that link building itself can be painful. Um, we used to do product link building uh, with, with targeted campaigns, but uh, it's, it's not like just that. It's, it's, it, you need hundreds of backlinks and in SEO niche, it's, it's, it's a bit of a specific because those people know what you want, what you want from them. Uh, and it often ended up as some part of cooperation or they wanted link, link exchange. That's something you don't want to do. Big link exchange doesn't make sense. Uh, so we focused 100% of our link building energy on content uh, when we saw the potential in our blog. Uh, because, you know, getting bank links for something valuable, uh, I think it makes more sense. Uh, however, in, as I mentioned already, in our niche, there's no easy way to fool the people because they know how these things work. We were targeting and we still are targeting bloggers, SEO skilled people or at least marketers. So uh, what, what we did with our landing, uh, with our link building campaign is that we did, did it in a, in a bit different way. Uh, we basically made fun of the typical outreach emails. Uh, I guess you get tons of them. Uh, so we created a funny template. Uh, we did hell of a research and personalized almost everything. Uh, it was really time consuming. But in a few weeks, we were able to outrank SEO guides by, by Moles, Backlink, or Adres. Those are huge brands in the world of SEO. So it worked great. Um, I think it was just being, being, being a bit different and being funny. And yeah, as you can see, um, many people decided to go for it uh, just because they liked the way we approached them. This is, this is very important. I mean, we are all marketers, so I guess you all, you all know that what I'm talking about. Uh, so, so, you know, it, uh, they, really like, they really liked it. And some people even, you know, uh, loved it so much, I'll sort you out, loved the intro. So they were hooked up by, by, the, by the way we approached them. And that can be, that can be very, that can be important. So you, so you are not focusing 100% only on the, on the content that you want to promote to them, but the way you approach them is very important. And yeah, some, some of them even tweeted this out, uh, which uh, brought us some, some brand awareness. Uh, uh, so yeah, and enough of talking with what we did. Uh, I formulated these this outreach tips that could help you with your outreach campaigns. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, it's nine steps. First of all, always make sure to research and categorize your prospects. Plan wisely how you're going to approach the people. You know, subject line, uh, it will influence your, your open, open rate. So yeah, that's very important. Uh, make sure that you are outreaching only with something that you would link to. I mean, if, if your content is rubbish, even a perfect campaign for it will not work. Uh, 
personalized more than ever, but, but don't be too cheesy and don't forget to send reminders. You know, we all have full inboxes. So, so yeah, uh, don't spam, but sending a one, maybe two reminders, I guess this will differ from niche to niche. Uh, yeah, it, it, it could, it could work. Okay, moving to the to the last part. Um, uh, I guess uh, 2020 was was a weird year for many of us. Um, in terms of, of of main goals, it started great. Uh, we hit a new record in terms of the overall overall uh, website traffic on our blog. Um, I'll be honest, it's, it's impossible to say how, how exactly the COVID-19 pandemic influenced our overall results. I mean, when it comes to our product revenue. What I can say for sure is that all the usual patterns changed a lot. But on the other hand, uh, when it comes to our blog numbers that you can see on the chart, on the slide, uh, the rankings started dropping. And this is what happened with the traffic in, in 2020. And uh, so the problem for us, uh, the problem was really clear. Uh, we were losing ranks and that has nothing to do with the pandemic. Uh, so we had to analyze tons of data and, and came up uh, with the major reasons behind this. I think this can happen to all of us. Uh, our rankings drop because of content decay, that's a normal thing that happens. Uh, we got a bit of a lack of backlinks compared to our competitors. And um, for the first time ever, we got hit uh, by Google Core updates. Uh, this is a big topic, I know. Um, uh, so I really don't want to talk about it uh, a lot, but this, this, this is funny because never ever before uh, we got hit uh, by Google Core updates. But I was, I was really digging and I found out that Google, based on the results I saw, not only uh, search results for our key, for the keywords that we are targeting, but for others, I think that Google really tries hard to improve how, how the algorithm evaluates the search intent. Uh, there were many earthquakes in, in the search results in 2020. Uh, many of search results that were more or less the same, I don't know, for maybe one or two years, the search, search results pages I saw uh, that haven't changed before, drastically changed from, from in 2020. So this is something that, that you, should, you should definitely uh, look on because the search intent is something that Google really focuses in last month. Um, yeah, cool. I, I, uh, uh, based on... Our experience um, with, with the content, I formulated these five things to keep in mind, but I think these are maybe part, this could be maybe part of the discussion, I guess Daniel, or maybe some of you will have, will have questions. So I'm not gonna read uh, through them all. So let, let's discuss. Thank you, Maros, and we have uh, definitely some questions. So there is actually uh, the question uh, in Slido that I wanted to ask as well about this funny, funny email outreach that you mentioned. Do you think uh, or have you used it uh, in the past again or it was just that one time? We, uh, for the first time, we used it in, uh, in 2018 when I was talking for the, for the ultimate SEO guide for beginners, which is typical evergreen content. Uh, and since then we used it. Uh, a couple of times. Um, the thing is that, you know, there there's no endless number of cool SEO blogs where you would like to have backlinks. So you are really hitting the threshold of people that you are already outreached. So it's it's kind of impossible to repeat it again and again. Yeah, and that 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 would be my other question. That if you think this could be reused by other people, because I think not only that you hit the limit with it, but also if more people started to use something similar, uh, we would see uh, more ignored emails and so on, so. Yes, definitely. I, I think that all of you all of you know Brian Dean or Beglin Co. Uh, a few years ago, he came up with his, you know, famous skyscraper technique, which was based on personalized email outreach to get backlinks. And uh, yeah, 
I, I get tons of emails like that and you just mark them as a spam. So, uh, so yeah, this can happen too with, with this. Um, I mean, we are not such a big brand, but uh, it happened a lot of times that we got uh, um, an email outreach it was identical to ours, so it was kind of funny. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was like, okay, we are we are we are we are doing something that people notice, and so they thought that they can use it too. Uh, but but yeah, I think it's not about being funny; it's about being about distinguishing from others. Uh, you don't, I mean, you don't have to be funny to hook up or, or, or to the person to 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 make interest in the person to open your email. I think the 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 core of this campaign was research and personalization and that's something that could that will work always i agree with you and also you didn't didn't mention one word but i think uh, you mentioned it when we were talking about it and that's being honest about what you are doing and uh, and and promoting so okay so we have another question uh, i mean i can take it from uh, my set of questions and that is how to treat fresh versus evergreen content. Uh, for example, how often do you uh, recommend to create a new blog post? Maybe let's talk about long forms and uh, long form content. And then how often do you rather recommend to update the existing uh, content that we call evergreen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a great question. And this, this is discussed, this thing is really discussed a lot. Um, I think uh, to your question, how often, uh, I think there's no clear answer for this because yes, there are studies uh, with uh, that state a clear correlation between the frequency and the results that, I mean, that makes sense. On the other hand, I think it doesn't make sense to frequently publish content just for the sake of it. Uh, so my answer probably would be as, as long as you can create high quality content and promote it well, it makes sense to, to publish it. And when it comes to updating your evergreen content, yeah, content repurposing is an amazing SEO technique. Uh, we started using it, using it a lot uh, for, for our ultimate guides. Uh, actually, the use case I was talking about, the, the traffic loss uh, in, in last year was mostly caused um, uh, by a drop of rankings for the biggest posts we have, those evergreen contents. And uh, yeah, we've been focusing a lot on this. So instead of publishing a new content every time, we focus on uh, updating our existing content that can bring us more traffic than new content. Uh, I think I will use the words of Andy Crestodina. He said in an interview we did with him, uh, if you want to, you will find it on our blog. And he said something like, um, uh, you don't need 1000 articles, you need um, 100 great articles. So uh, first of all, you need to know which post to update. And basically you have two options for that. You have articles that almost rank high and you have uh, articles that did rank high but uh, your ranking started to slip so what you have to do is to make a better post of them uh, because if your ranks started slipping away that means that some newer better more high quality content uh, was produced on the topic so yeah content repurposing of the of the biggest post of your blog do it. Don't hesitate a second. Cool. Thank you. Uh, let's get to next question. What should we consider when we are selling service, not the product? Is there is there any main difference? I, I think what you are selling is also services, even if we call them products, because it's a subscription uh, model. So maybe uh, if you have something to, to add. Yeah, I, I think the question was maybe more aimed to a service, let's say, not a software as a service, but maybe, I know, cleaning service or okay. something like that. So I, I think uh, if this is the case, I, I think basically there is no difference because you can still have a blog, 
about um, about cleaning services, and you can rank for tons of keywords related uh, to cleaning services, and you can become really like an authority in in local cleaning services. That means that you will have you will create how to guides how to clean clean your apartment by not calling us a uh, cleaning service. This has a lot of value in, in long term uh, because it will build brand awareness. Uh, I think, yeah, why not? Sure. Okay. And how many people are currently working at Mangles uh, at uh, content publishing or in content publishing and promotion, excluding you or including you as, as you wish? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we we have we have a, a, a content marketing team which is headed by Vlado, as I already mentioned, and he writes most of the content. And then we have two other writers. One is internal, one is external, and of course, uh, our performance team is working on promoting the content and uh, social marketing stuff and so on. So it, it differs from it's usually about four five people. And, and these uh, from these four or five people, how often do you, or what, what is what does your content uh, plan, publishing plan look like? Um, yeah, we we always think quality over quantity, so we we never publish tens of mediocre posts just to publish something. Uh, so we always try to go for the big keywords, big topics, and it takes sometimes one or two months to publish publish a publish a great piece of content. Uh, on the other hand, I think there is still some room for improvement to write more great topics. But as I mentioned, SEO is, I mean, each niche has some some threshold where you know you cannot endlessly publish new content all the time. That's right. And it's uh, also you are basically in the most uh, competitive and, and the highest uh, volume industry because all the SEOs are working on the content all the time. So, yeah. All right. Um, so there is a, also a question about your SEO and content report, maybe reporting how the content uh, content uh, ranks and how, how, how it uh, attracts um, people and potential customers to your website. What, what kind of metrics do you recommend to, to use? Well, uh, when it comes the, the KPIs, I think the first and most important KPI is the organic traffic. Um, because you are writing content, you are targeting keywords, and that, that makes the biggest sense to rank high and to get a lot of organic traffic uh, as the top of the funnel. And then the task of your of your blog and of, of your content hub, your internal links and the way you communicate on your website, the task is to somehow convert those people to read more and more of your blog to become uh, blog subscribers. So the number of blog subscribers is another KPI. Then we also track how many people, uh, how many blog posts people usually read per session. It's really important. And um, we what used to track backlinks in comparison with, with competitors, but that actually doesn't make sense because, you know, it, when it comes to backlinks, it doesn't matter how many you have them. It, it's all about the, it's all about the, uh, the, uh, the quality. But um, I see in the question that, the, the, that Stefan is asking whether I can share it some, at, some, at least some small part of the report. Uh, I think, yeah, we can. We we have a template. Uh, I uh, so I don't know, Daniel, if you plan to send the presentation to. Yeah, we'll be we'll be sending the presentation and also video that we'll publish uh, later on YouTube and Facebook and so on. So sure. yeah, if you provide us with the template, we can definitely send it to people. Sounds good. That that will possibly bring more people to your website as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, okay. So, in addition to this question, uh, you said organic traffic. Do you count uh, referral referral traffic uh, into organic traffic, or do you, do you uh, monitor it separately? Or yeah, well, referral traffic is it became a tricky metric um, because 
normally the effort, the more organic traffic you had, the more backlinks you, you have, usually the more referral traffic you have. But since WordPress changed this thing and by default sets uh, all the links as no referrer, it's, it's, it's kind of impossible to track the referral traffic. So uh, we don't pay too much attention to referral traffic anymore. Okay. Okay. Um... So there is uh, maybe last question and then we can conclude. If, if you want to uh, respond to this question, if you use any other SEO tools, or I'm sure that you have some uh, competition um, competition overview that you do like uh, regularly. So if, if you know some good, uh, other good SEO tools that uh, you use or recommend, let's mention them. Sure, well, uh, first of all, um, I will do a bit of a promo for us. Uh, we have five SEO tools in the package, not only KW Finder. Uh, uh, and yeah, of course, we, we, we uh, aim for a market, uh, beginner-oriented people, beginner-oriented SEOs. Also, we, of course, we have agencies as clients and so on. But uh, when, when we compare to Ahrefs or SEMrush, it's, it's a bit of a different tool. It's there more like marketing content and SEO tools, all, all these huge, pack, huge packages. So yeah, Ahrefs is one of the tools that we use. Okay, cool. Um, I, I don't know if single, single most important SEO metric you monitor. I think you mentioned a few of them. So if you, if you want to put something on the top of the <laughs> ranking for, for SEO metrics, please do. Hmm. I think it's any metric you choose at the end of the day is all about the organic traffic you, get, you are getting. So I think organic traffic. Organic traffic and then maybe number of signups or conversions coming from that, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it differs. You know, the goal of having a blog is not to sell your product. So yeah. cool. Thank you, Maros. And thank you being our first guest at SEOs Rust 2021. Uh, in this virtual webinar. And uh, I want to also mention that uh, it will be a great honor to have Rand Fishkin coming next after you on June 18 at 2 p.m. Please follow our uh, Facebook or social networks and we will also uh, send you updates on this. So again, uh, we'll be continuing with Rand Fishkin on June 18, 2 p.m. And thank you again uh, for, uh, for participating here, Maros. And uh, we wish you best of luck in more content creation and also more presentations like this. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.